Okay, we are now going to do the yoke on the man's shirt. And the first thing that we're gonna do <clears throat> is we have both yokes here that we need. And then we have the back and then I have my two fronts. And I finished, I got the band done and the pocket so I'm ready to do the yoke. Okay, so the first thing is I took the pattern off the yoke and I made sure that I had um, done any marking I needed to. And the only, the thing that I marked was center back and then there was a, a little notch here that I just snipped in. So again, I have center back on the neck side and the yoke side. So I have those done. And then I have the back piece. And what you want to mark on the back piece is the little pleat. So across the back it will have lines for your pleat. And if you just do little snips, then you can just fold your fabric and fold it along the one line. So you just kind of snip that and then you bring it to the other one. Okay, and then we stitch it. I mean, well, then we pin it. So I went ahead and folded the pleat in on both sides. And as you can see, I have a little box pleat here. And most men's shirts have a little pleat. If I were to turn this to the other side, I'd have two little inverted pleats. But I like the box pleat on the front. And so both of these sides, I line up those two uh, pleat lines that were on the pattern that I just did little snips on. And then as you can see here, I've got my pins on this side to tell me that this is the right side of the fabric. Because this fabric, it's really hard to tell right from wrong, from wrong side. They both look the same. So I just kind of designated this one as the right side. Okay, so I'm ready now to put the yoke on. If you wanted to, if, if those aren't staying in place, you could always baste across those um, pleats. But I've got them pinned pretty good, so I, I feel good about that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yoke, and I've got both yokes here. And so one of them is going to be the yoke that you see on the outside of the garment, and one of them is going to be the yoke facing. All right? So I'm going to take this one here, and I've got this one on the right side. So I'm going to put right sides together and line those up. Okay, and I'm just going to stick a few pins in here. Lining up my notches good. And if, if it doesn't line up good, then you can adjust your pleats. Like maybe your pleats need to be a little bit longer, a little bit, or a little deeper, um, a little less deep. So whatever you need to do to get these, this to line up good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a pin right here, center back. And on the, on the um, back piece, I've got a crease right there, so I can tell that. And then on the front, I did put a little snip right there. Okay, and this seems to be lining up pretty good. Okay, so there's my one yoke. And if I stitch across here, pull that up, then that was, is what it's going to look like. Now I want to do the other side of the yoke so that all my seams are enclosed. So what I do here is I go to the back of the garment and I'm going to go ahead and put the right side of the yoke to the wrong side of the garment. So when I line it up like this, then after I stitch this seam, then when I bring this up on the inside of the shirt, See, that seam will then be covered up, it'll be enclosed. And on the inside of the shirt, I've got the right side of the yoke showing, because there's my pin. All right? So I'm going, to, um, I'm going to pin these three seams together. And this would be called a sandwich seam, because I've got the yoke, then the shirt, and the yoke. So three layers, bread, bologna, bread. So that's why we call that a sandwich seam. Okay, so now I'm just gonna finish pinning this good. Okay. I'm gonna pin this all the way across and get it nice and uh, flat. And my notches may li not line up exactly because when you're cutting out three pieces, you're bound to be a little bit different on each one, but you wanna get your main 
markings together. So I've lined up the center backs for all three pieces and I've got that in there. And then I want to get my raw edges together and making sure they all meet together. And whenever you do multiple layers like this, you got to just make sure everything is meeting together well. And I've left my pins in on the yoke where the pleats are so they don't move. Okay, so I've got that side. Now I'm going to line this one up good. And I'm going to start over on this side and get those three edges perfectly together. Then I'm going to smooth this part out and just uh, line up those raw edges. There. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and stitch this seam at 5 eighths. I'm stitching across the back yoke seam at 5 eighths. So I'm uh, I just started stitching this and of course you've got your 5 8 marking and I like needle down. So if I push this button here my needle will stay down. That means every time I stop sewing instead of the needle coming up it stays down. So it holds my when I want to stop and rearrange uh, my hands or the fabric then the needle will stay down so that it doesn't move while I'm sewing. And I'm going, I can feel I'm going over top of those pleats and they're staying nice and flat because I've got them pinned well. We don't want to go over our pins. We don't want to sew over our pins. We stop right before we get to the pin. And you always want to try and pin your layers together where you're going to sew because that's where you want your uh, fabrics to hold and stay together. And we'll back stitch along this seam. Okay, so now I've got this sewn on. Here's the first yoke. Here's the back, and here's the other yoke. And I have a pin here marking the pleat. I'm just going to make sure I take that out. Okay, now, the next thing I would do is to trim and grade this seam. But before I do that, I want to, I might go ahead and sew the shoulder seam just to get it exactly where I want it, and then I can come back and trim and grade. Okay, so here's the right side of the back the right side of the yoke. See that you've got that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the other side of the yoke and I'm just going to lay it down flat so that it's right here um, folded underneath the shirt. Okay so then I'm going to take my two fronts and they now get sewn together at the shoulder seam of the yoke. So here's my right side um, and so I'm going to put right sides together. So I kind of line that up. And then here's my left side, or here's the right side of the right side. <laughs> this was the right side of the, le of the left side. Okay, so now I'm going to, again, I put the, that's where the shoulder seams are going to go. So I'm going to lay it out flat. And then I'm going to take the shirt and I'm going to start rolling it up. So we call this method the burrito method. Okay, so I'm going to roll this up like a burrito. Okay, and then when I get up here, here's the other side of the yoke and I'm just going to go all the way up like that. And then I'm going to take this, wrap it up around. So see there's my burrito. And then I'm going to take these three pieces at the shoulder seam and this is all stay stitched. I've stay stitched the shoulder and the neck of the yoke so it doesn't stretch out of shape. And then I'm going to pin this together good. Okay.
Make sure your raw edges are together and you want to make sure they line up at the edge here, right at the seam. And if it's a little off, you can usually, because this is a bias direction, you can kind of stretch it a bit to make sure it all fits in. Okay, I've got that side. Now let's do the other side. Here's my three layers together. I'm going to put those together right here. Okay. Okay, and I'm getting these all lined up good. Now I'm going to make sure they all line up at this edge. If not, well, they will line up because I'll make them. <laughs> so you want to make sure you get those lined up on both edges. There, okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew 5 eighths along here, shoulder seam, and here. And I'm going to sew directionally, which means I'm going to start at the neck and go down to the shoulder. Well, well the neck at the shoulder down to the um, arm side. Okay, so I'm just finishing sewing the one shoulder seam with my three seams. So that again, this is a sandwich seam. And now I'm going to, see doesn't that look like a giant burrito? Probably wouldn't taste like a burrito. Okay, now we're going to do 5 eighths on this side. And you want to make sure you back stitch. Okay, now I'm going to show you this little magic trick. So I've got them sewn together, and if I take this little shirt right out of the neck seam, and because I have stay stitched the neck, it will not stretch it out, so I'm okay there. And when I do this and unroll it, then I turn it to the right side. Look how my seams are all enclosed. Here's the right side, and here's the inside. And on the inside, see how that is all enclosed here. Isn't that perfect? I can take these pins out. Okay, so now that I know I've got it sewn exactly where I want it, and I've got my right side, the right side showing here, and the right side on this side it looks great. I'm going to go back inside now and I'm going to trim and grade. I'm going to trim and grade my seams good, then I'm going to press it and I'm going to edge stitch all along the yoke here. So I'll go ahead and do that trimming and grading and then I'll we'll go on to the next step.